This week on The Nerd Man, I am going to be talking about game design. Welcome to The Nerd Man. I'm going to be talking about game design and sort of my journey with it so far. I'm by no means an expert on this topic, but I've done it. I've made a few games, and I'm going to talk about that, and I'm just going to let you know what's kind of going on and the where I started and sort of where I'm going with it. So to begin with, uh, let's get into my history with games or playing games. Now, I'm in particular, I'm talking about sort of tabletop board, board games and card games. And I would say that my, I've, I've always liked playing them. I've played them for years and years. I've, I've always had a little collection of games, but I wouldn't say I really got into board games until just a few years ago and really that happened when the show Tabletop came out on YouTube with Will Wheaton if you haven't seen that I would definitely go check out those episodes I mean it just really kind of draws you in to the fun of sitting around a table with some friends and playing board games so after that kind of began to air I did a lot of like book role playing games, which, which I'm going to have a top three video on that uh, on my YouTube channel coming out this week as well. So you can hear sort of what I thought of that. But I've, I've had a history of playing that, but that became kind of tough with me and my friends because somebody always had to run it and it, it was always so much work. So the beauty of a board game or a tabletop game is you can just you know, you put it out there, you know, somebody's got to kind of be in charge and know the rules, but you just put it out there and you play it in one night and everybody hopefully has fun. So that is sort of when I started to get into into board games, when I couldn't get together with friends as often, we couldn't role play as often, and I really started to like board games. Now the trouble with board games is oftentimes you buy one and you can't play it really very easily. You don't have a group or it's, you know, maybe you only get together every so often. And that kind of was my trouble. I kept buying games and I wouldn't get to play them that much. And that's still sort of my trouble today as well. But I get to play them every once in a while. But as I began to play them and get more into it, I got kind of, you know, the funny thing is, is so I was working with a friend actually for a couple of years and and we sort of started talking about it at work the idea of like making a board game and we had this cool idea which I'm probably not going to tell you right now because I may use it in the future it's in my ideas book but I actually started to sort of work on it like sort of on the side just out of curiosity and didn't realize how how big of a project it was and whatever And then I sort of fizzled out with it, and I didn't work on it anymore. But I think that was sort of the beginning of the idea of me making games. If you didn't know, I make board games. That's sort of my side job, I guess, or whatever, however you want to put it. It's a part of the piece of the pie of my life. And I've already made a few board games, and I'll probably talk about that, but Zion Productions isn't just a channel where I make kind of variety videos, or I guess you could be listening to this on a podcast as well. I mean, Zion Productions is meant to be sort of an all-encompassing thing for just what I call a production is just anything that I produce, basically, whether it's board games or videos or... I have no idea. Who knows what I'll do in the future? Books, maybe? I don't know. I'd love to make movies. You know, I think I'm going to touch on that later, but I think I'm actually going to do a history of Zion Productions maybe for the next Nerdman podcast. I'm going off on a rabbit trail here, though. So basically, that's where it began. Kind of the seed was planted that, hmm, I kind of like designing, maybe designing games. So that, let, let, let's go into my background with design. So I have 
I've been playing with things like Photoshop and stuff for years. And I definitely have a video background more so than anything. I've always had an art background as far as drawing and stuff. I mean, since I was a kid, me and my brother would draw stuff all the time. Um, you can probably find some of my art here or there around my website and anyways that sort of went away as years went on I didn't draw as much or anything but I've always had that sort of interest in kind of art design graphic design videos and things and eventually I I got a job you know working with the friend that I mentioned at a, at a graphic design job, basically, a graphic design company. And I worked there for a couple of years. And honestly, guys, I, I probably wasn't even qualified necessarily to work there. I needed to learn a lot. But I got hired under the premise that I would sort of learn at the job. I knew Photoshop. I knew Photoshop pretty well. In fact, I, I would venture to say I'm a probably a, a, a master photoshop or master photoshopper I don't know how you say that but I'm I'm pretty up there as far as knowing photoshop pretty well definitely above average so I had that confidence going in there what I didn't know was Adobe Illustrator which is heavily what they used and heavily what they use in graphic design so I had to learn that and as I learned it I learned new techniques and things that would definitely help and kind of inspire me to go down this design route well anyways as time went on this business sort of we sort of lost business I would say or we just weren't getting new business it got slow and I was I knew I was probably going to get let go so and that was, you know, I was okay with that, but I started at that time working on my first game then. I wanted to make a game that was simple enough for me to make and, and I thought would be super fun. And it's a game that I don't talk about very much. I almost don't even count it as my first game sometimes, but it's called Mind Fart. And you can actually find it on my Game Crafter. Uh, I, I believe I still have it allowed to be published. It's ridiculously overpriced because again I learned a lot I learned especially a lot from that game on sort of the do's and the don'ts in regards to making a game basically it was a party game where I'll describe it quickly it's it's a party style game like apples to apples I wanted it to be sort of an apples to apples sort of clone type thing but I, I thought it would be fun to sort of have these idioms um, and they would have blank spaces in them and you would fill in you know the the judge would read the idiom with a blank space in it and then and then the players would respond with the cards in their hands with words to sort of do a mad libs sort of type thing, I guess, with idioms, to make funnier idioms. And I don't know, I played it a couple of times. Um, it, you know, it worked, but it probably could have used more polish. But what I found out with the Game Crafter and everything is I could not make this game for cheap. And I tried putting it on Kickstarter. I horribly failed with it. And it just, I'm not very proud of that game, but it was my first game. But it, it put me into place to make more games, and I learned so much. And that's the thing, that, that's going to be the theme sort of behind this, is that you just got to keep going, complete projects, learn stuff. Keep going and learning. I've learned so much, and I haven't had a lot of success, but I've learned so much. So I, I'm more confident going forward with, my abilities or maybe where I need to go because I learned from a failure. So that led me, well, okay, so then I lost my job and that's sort of when I made Mindfart. I did lose my job. I made Mindfart. We made some life changes. I'll leave it at that for now. But that sort of began my journey as I, I wanted to try to work full-time on game design. 
and making games. And that moved me into the maze. I made the maze next. Now, the maze is probably one of my most popular games. Well, it is my most popular game. It's, it's the only one that I actually had a success with on Kickstarter, which shocked me. And through the course of some life events, I just threw it out there. I can maybe go into that story, but we had, I'll just say we had a big accident and we lost almost everything, like our house, everything. It's, maybe I'll save that story for another day, but the, I'll just leave it with, the good news is my whole family was safe, we survived, and, and I had just completed this game right before this accident happened. So, I mean, it was, it was months that went by for some recovery and different things. And I finally said to myself, you know, I finished this game. I just, I got to put it out there. So I threw it on Kickstarter. I did nothing. You know, I had a horrible experience with mind fart on Kickstarter. And I just thought, you know what? Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give it one more shot. I'm going to throw it on Kickstarter. Well, to my surprise, it was a success. It was not a, you know, not a glowing success, but I had about 80 some backers on it. So I was sort of shocked. And I had a lot of people tell me, you know, it's really hard to have a success. So I was like, oh, maybe I made a pretty good game and whatever. I sold some, I sold some, uh, I, I got a few extra copies, put them on Amazon and I sold them there at the end. Uh, I, you know, printed it through the Game Crafter. If you guys don't know what the Game Crafter is, it's a great sort of tool for game designers to use to make prototypes. You can even make completed games. They, they do have some pretty good quality stuff now. They're always making more innovative new things that are sort of the, the print-on-demand market. You can print one copy. That being the case, they're a little bit more expensive, though. You know, I mean, if you were to go to China and have your game manufactured there, you're going to get it way cheaper, but you have to produce it in much massive quantities. So if you just want to get some of your games out, um, the Game Crafter is great. They're especially great for making prototypes and everything. I love them for that reason. But uh, yeah, the maze was a, a success. I wanted to make a game that was simple, fast-paced. In fact, I, I don't know if I created that game mechanic but I created this game mechanic, I've never seen it before, where basically you everybody goes at the same time. It's kind of a very fast-paced game. You all roll dice, you compare the dice, you move, and different things Things happen. I used the same mechanic for the maze as I did for my next game, The Race, which wasn't a success at all. It was a pretty big failure, which shocked me. So I guess before I segue into that... Um, I mean, it comes down to having a good idea, I think, a good game mechanic and, and things. I think I had a pretty good good idea for the maze and that game mechanic. In fact, the game mechanic came from playing with my family. My wife doesn't like when games slow down. And, you know, I wanted to have a game that kept everybody engaged. I wanted a game that I enjoyed playing on my, I make a lot of jokes about it's it's better than Candyland. Candyland is is so mind-numbingly boring, and you know kids love it. They always want to play it. So I wanted to make a game that I wanted to play with my kids that had a little bit more depth to it, but was still simple enough to play with my five-year-old kids. And um, that's sort of where that game mechanic came from and the maze came from, the theme. In fact, I couldn't decide if I wanted to do the race or the maze first. I opted for the maze as I thought people would like, you know, maze type things more. And I think in that case, I, I was right. I, I, I don't know if that's why I had a success. I'm still trying to figure that out to this day. But I then moved on to the race because I thought, okay, I have this mechanic. It's already in place. I just got to tweak it a little bit to make the race. So I made the race and that was a big failure. I mean, people didn't like it. I, I heard a little bit of feedback that some thought it was too simplistic. 
I've heard things like, you know, sport-themed games in general don't do very well. I, I, f I found in time that theme is a big part of game design. Now, a lot of people say if your game's fun and whatever doesn't matter, but I think theme does matter quite significantly. And so from there, I moved on. I, I tried to repackage things. I ended up creating the maze and putting it back into this deluxe package because it used to have an expansion pack, but I always thought it was better together. So I just made the decision to make it together later on into kind of the maze deluxe edition. You can get all these games if you want to take a look at them on my website, zionproductions.com. Zion, if you don't know, is spelled with an X, not a Z. So it's all there on my website. You can take a look at them. You can even buy them if you want through the Game Crafter, where, where I just have them set up for print-on-demand at this point. But um, So I had a couple of failures with Kickstarter. And at the time, I was starting to make another game. I, in fact, I, have, I was making another game, which I, if you go through the history of my Facebook page called Titan Slayer, and it was a big game. These other games I made were little games. I was trying to kind of knock out a bunch of little games to sort of build up my company before really diving into a big game. But I had this idea for Titan Slayer. And without going into too much detail on that game, I kind of ended up putting it on the shelf. I play tested it a ton, played with some other people, had some good feedback, and I think it's I think it's going to be a solid game if I ever get to the point of releasing it. It's just, it's a beast. Art is one of my arch nemesis. Now, I tell you all this, I had a design background and everything. Well, I haven't drawn a lot in, in a long time, and I had a sort of a specific drawing style. I would draw anime as time went on, but I started with more cartoons and things. I was never really great at kind of fantasy type art or anything. And basically, over time, I didn't draw. I didn't draw very much at all. I'm pretty good at graphic design now. I think I can do layout and things pretty well. I'm pretty confident in, in that. It's the art problem. So without a lot of money, I can't pay for an artist really easily or anything. So that sort of sidelined me on Titan Slayer. And it still is sort of sidelining me today, even though I'm starting to get back into it. But I decided, what can I make? What can I make that can fit my abilities? So I made a game called Boogers. And I thought, I'm going to go with the disgusting theme. People like these adult, gross-out, you know, well, Cards Against Humanity and things like that. Now, see, to me, I think I went the wrong route in my mind on this because I was thinking Boogers would be more of an adult-type thing. I didn't think because it was kind of this gross out humor. I think it actually kind of came back on me that, wait, this, this is more like boy, teen, maybe even less than teen humor, boogers and gross out stuff like that, boogers and farts and whatever. So I don't know if I had the, quite the audience that I had in mind originally for that game, but I did a lot more with boogers. Um, I wanted to make it in China, so I, I mean, I spent months really researching that, learning it, and how to publish in China and manufacture, I should say, in China, and get the game back here when it's done. All that stuff. I did all the planning. I, I talked to people, and and I had it all set up. I made, in my opinion, the best Kickstarter campaign I had made. I really took my time with this one. In fact, I even delayed it because I wanted to spend more time making it just right. I send most of my games out to publishers as well just to see if they would want to publish it. Uh, but I, otherwise, I pretty much plan on self-publishing. And I had a lot of buzz with Boogers. A lot of people wanted to see more, more than my other games I had made previously. They wanted to see more about it, hear more about it. So I sent it off. I've, I got some pretty good feedback here there. Nobody wanted to publish it, but definitely had a lot more buzz on that one. So I was pretty confident going into it that it was going to be a success on Kickstarter, and to my surprise, it wasn't. It, it bombed. It, um, 
it it just yeah it didn't do well and i had some feedback from other publishers a, a guy that i know um i think he used to have a podcast called the forbidden limb but it changed to like the board i don't know if it was called board game group or something i, I don't know but it's brian hanky i think is how you say his name of overworld games he's been very nice and and uh he He's helped me with some some tips and things, so I appreciate that. That's I've, like I said, I've learned from all these failures, and I think some people might associate Zion Productions with having a bunch of dud games. However, everybody that's played my games actually bought them and played them. I've gotten nothing but positive feedback from everybody. They say they're enjoyable, they're light games that I've made so far. As I said, I haven't been able to get into the deeper, complex ones because of really because of art it's not because of the, the game design parts the games are actually working fairly well it's just the art side of things that i have to figure out how to afford and or decide if i can do it if i can pull it off you know if i can keep it in the range of my art style so i did all the art for boogers because it was sort of in that cartoony art style i felt pretty confident about it i'm i'm pretty confident i like the art of that game for the most part I'm probably the most proud of that game to this point, and unfortunately, it didn't take off. I tried it on Kickstarter twice, one with trying to manufacture in China. That didn't work. I needed like $9,000 for that to just break even, and I didn't even get close to that number. So I don't even think I got 500 but anyways, I, I then went to just thinking I would self-publish it on the Game Crafter like I did with the other ones. I changed the pricing and, and stuff. And that still didn't work. I got really close to my goal there. In fact, I only needed, I think, $500, and I couldn't even get that. So it was a big disappointment, but I have sold a few copies on the Game Crafter since then. And I guess what I'm telling you all this stuff for is I'm just letting you know my journey and where I'm going if I could tell you anything about any of this, if anybody's listening that wants to know tips, it's just keep trying. You're always going to learn. I mean, from the point when I started with Mindfart to, to the point where I am now, I've had failures. I've, I've had more failures than successes. But, I mean, my wife always reminds me, you know, like Thomas Edison failed. And I don't think he calls it failure. I can't think of the quote right now, but it's basically like he just tried a thousand times before he finally got it right or whatever i think to make you know the light bulb work or whatever it's just keep trying and learn from your failures try not to be discouraged that's not always going to happen i get discouraged a lot but moving forward in the future i'm going to keep trying to make games now i've had to i've had to tone down the production time because i need to make money somewhere and i've got another sort of couple of businesses for that but I'm still working on it in fact I'm going back into Titan Slayer lately I'm going to try to dive into that and see if I can't finish it or figure out how I can maybe do the art for it or pay somebody but I don't have a good solid piece of advice on how to be successful in this business but I think overall you just keep trying you're going to be successful eventually when you keep trying and I have had some successes I can actually say I made games I've made like four games now how many people have done that I mean to me that's success in itself but of course I'd like bigger successes and hopefully those will come in time but if you're into game design just keep doing it just keep doing it and keep learning about it I mean even though I didn't get to manufacture in China, I learned all about it and I'm ready to do it if I need to down the road. You know, I'm, I've learned how to do a pretty good Kickstarter in my opinion. I've, I've, I've looked at other Kickstarters and things and I feel like I know how to do that stuff. I can use the skills that I have in graphic design to help me design games. You know, the future is out there, and I would just encourage anybody who wants to do this stuff to just keep doing it, keep trying, make make time for it when you can, and and do it. So that's sort of my journey with game design. I, um, sorry if it wasn't as informative, it was more of a story, I guess. 
but hopefully you took something from it and you know I think after talking about this I think I'm going to talk about the like I said earlier in the video I think I'm going to talk about the history of Zion Productions a lot of probably nobody knows where this company started where how I you know made it or whatever so I think I'm going to talk about that next time and so to tell you how I started and how I got to this point today and what I've done throughout all the years. And so you can look forward to that next week on The Nerd Man. If you're watching on YouTube, keep YouTubing it up. If you're listening to a podcast somewhere, then I will see you next week. Remember to subscribe on any platform. Stay up to date. You're going to get these every week on Mondays. So keep subscribing and commenting and all that stuff. I never know how to end these because it's a little different. Anyways, take care, everybody.